just been nice. <laughs> So here we are, Christmas Day, we made it. Christmas Day 2020, happy Christmas everybody. Um, if that is what you're celebrating, happy Yule, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever it is you're celebrating. It has been a long year. It would be totally redundant to say it has been a challenging year. Well done, we made it. And I think it's a very good year to work hard to get ourselves a really magical Christmas. It's a good year to spoil yourself a little bit, you know, and gifts don't have to be expensive. But I have got myself a rather lovely gift because it's not only been a challenging year for me, the same as everybody else, but it's been quite a challenging year for me at work. Foundations Revealed has absolutely blown up. Our business has almost trebled because we were set up in the right place at the right time as an online education business to be there for people during the pandemic. And we've had a lot of people join very fast, so which was a very challenging thing to step up and deal with. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my team. We've all worked really hard. I've worked really hard. So I've bought myself a very lovely gift for Christmas. And I thought you might like to Help me open it. I have wanted one of these absolutely forever. And I have been jealous of other people having these. I bought an antique sewing machine. Let me turn this around. I think they built me a crate. I think I'm literally gonna have to unscrew this thing out of its box. There's a note on the top that says, please unscrew the box, do not pull the handle. I was ready with the best pair of scissors in the house, but I didn't realize I was gonna to need to go and get a screwdriver to open this. I guess I snip these. Right back when I first got online with sewing, I knew somebody, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Koshka or somebody, who had six antique and vintage sewing machines of different eras. And each time she was making an outfit, she would use the machine appropriate to that era, which just seemed like a really romantic thing to do. And I've learnt as I've been researching which machine I should get. This is a rabbit hole and nobody can stop at one. So this is probably going to start something. I wanted a very old one, obviously, because I like making 1890s, 1900s stuff. But the older the machine gets, the more difficult it is to get parts, to get needles. I had lots of good advice. I went to my own Foundations Real community, which is one of those times. Whenever I go to my own community for advice on something sewing related, I'm like, yes, because the whole reason in the first place that I created it was because I wanted to be a member of it. So many people at Foundations Revealed have got antique machines and love antique machines. My post had, I think, over 100 comments by the time they were done. Oh, I possibly didn't go with the most sensible advice, but I'm, I, I took a punt. I fell in love with one in particular. It's tempting to lift it up out of the box, but the note on the top did say, we need to actually take the box apart around it, which seems sensible. So now I need a screwdriver. It's very coffin-like. <laughs> or it feels like it's something that's waking up. she is and she's still wrapped in plastic she's in a beautiful case you see why I say coffin like it's beautifully carved if you're thinking of buying an antique sewing machine all the best advice when you do so for the first time is that you should buy really a Singer machine because there are so many of them out there Singer were they weren't necessarily the best sewing machines hard to judge 
but they were certainly the best at marketing, which means that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of Singer machines, and there's a lot that's known about them. There are tons of instruction manuals out there and attachments and all the bits and pieces you can need, and lots of people have them. So I've not done that. This isn't a Singer. So I gambled big time because I just fell in love with this one. It's so beautiful. Trying to take her out gently. Yes, it's already a her. Is that bad? I have a gendered sewing machine. Oh, look at this wood. It's so beautiful. It is really wrapped tightly in this plastic. It's like um, those machines at the airport where you wrap your bags completely in miles and miles of plastic wrap. I'm going to get up on a chair and try and pull from above. That's it. Aha. Now we can get it out. So I've got a bit more sneaking to do, I think. This was one piece of advice I heard when buying an old sewing machine. Make sure they pack it well. No problem with this seller. So well done to them. She's lovely. I think it looks like there's some more wrap over the machine itself. So I think we're ready to get this baby out. So here is the key. Now I've got to figure out how to put it. It's very, very unusual. There are a few Frister and Rossman machines out there, but this was the only one I saw like this. So, here she is. This was one of the things I learned to look for, that the feet have a screw on the side. Apparently it's more easy to get old sewing machine feet that have, or they're more recently been made with the screw on the side. So that is, there we go. Gosh, isn't she gorgeous? Let's get rid of all the snow. Very appropriate for the season. modern machine, which you can see behind me, is a Faf, which I bought in 1996. That was my first sewing machine of my own, after I stopped borrowing my mother's. And it has done me proud for 24 years. And I love it, and I still love it. And there'll be times I'll probably still use it. But I've always wanted a beautiful old machine. I saw a few old Faf machines, but not very many, and they weren't in the condition I wanted. So I went with a different German brand, and this one was just so beautiful. This is very Art Nouveau decoration here. It's unlike any other machine I saw, so I'm afraid I fell in love, and that was it. Having these plates this way means that it's a vibrating shuttle machine, apparently. It's probably not going to have a modern bobbin, and... That is preferable to the ones that have these silver plates going side to side. That's a transverse shuttle machine, and they're much more temperamental and much older. So apparently these ones are better to get if you're new to this. So these are all the bits and pieces that come with it. Good idea to try and get a machine that's got as many of the bits and pieces and the attachments as possible. This, I'm not quite sure about yet. I know all my silver machine people are going to tell me in the comments what these are. It's a pair of snips, a snippy thread. Um, this is... Probably for quilting, I've got one of these on my modern machine. 
I've got a little bobbin here. This is unlike the, the modern bobbins, the little circular ones. And another bobbin, always good to have more than one. A little screw that looks important. And a variety of feet. I've got three different roll hemming feet, but different sizes of roll hem, different fabrics, I suppose. A couple of these look like cording feet because they've got grooves underneath. There you are. So I've got seven feet in all, including the one on the machine, a little quilting gauge, two bobbins, a pair of snips, and whatever this is. I gambled when I bought this because many old machines need a type of needle that isn't really made anymore which makes them virtually paperweights if you can't get the right needles. So I'm going to have to play with this later, I think. See if we can get this threaded up and get it working. It certainly, the mechanism certainly works. I can turn the handle. And it's all happening. So it's looking good. It's just such a satisfying sound and feel. using these old machines is that when you're actually sewing something important and you're sewing say a precision bit to where you've got to get it just right you're going to need to learn to do it with one hand because usually your foot is operating the machine on a modern machine and you've got two hands to hang onto the fabric but this time with one of these you've only got one hand and the other is turning the handle which can take a little while to get used to. But we have a beautiful little seam going there. So if we get a tape measure here, we can measure, yep, the stitches are just about one millimeter long. This machine would usually sew two millimeter long stitches, or that's its default stitch length. This one seems to be set to about one millimeter. And I learnt this many years ago from Luca, our mentor at Foundations. First time I saw a corset that he'd made, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It looked like an antique. It genuinely looked like a mint condition antique. And I couldn't figure out what it was he'd done to make it look so somehow magical and authentic. And the secret, which he told me, is that the stitch length, the length of the stitches is very, very short. He makes one millimeter stitches. So just like this machine will do. The drawback to that, of course, is if you need to unpick it, it's a beast when you've done tiny, tiny stitches, but it just somehow looks magically antique and authentic if you put tiny stitches in. I am so delighted with this. It is so beautiful. It's a little piece of, a little piece of the past and it just feels like magic. It feels like time travel, especially to have a machine that's so unusual it feels like it genuinely popped out of time machine so i am going to have a lot of fun getting this working i think i'm going to enjoy machine sewing more with this because of this beautiful sound it makes it's going to be relaxing there'll probably still be jobs i will do on the new one because there, there are nifty things that this one can do that this one can't so i'm I'm reluctant to say I would be a purist about it just for the sake of it, um, because it's about the quality of the work in the end. But I know I'm going to have a wonderful time stepping back in time with this. It feels like a very magical experience. So we will see whether it turns out to be a good purchase in terms of whether it's easy to get parts, whether it's easy to get it fixed, whether it's easy to get the needles. I haven't been able to take that out yet and look. It still may turn out to be just a beautiful ornament, we'll see. But so far, so good, it does seem to be working. And I just fell in love with this particular one, and we'll see whether it's a good little workhorse for the foreseeable future. We will see whether this is only the first. <laughs> and in the meantime, I guess the only thing left to say is have a very happy Christmas.